Beautiful. All right. Well, we're going to get started with Harold Kuntz. Go ahead, Harold. So, Sean, I think this is the first time uh, we've talked to you in a little while, if it's since before season. So, just what's the process been trying to get yourself immersed with the Chiefs uh, defensively, the scheme, getting some play time, and also representing Missouri S&T, uh, that small school factor, representing Missouri S&T into the league? Uh, it's been good. I mean, just uh, going out there competing every day, um, making, getting my habits down of what I'm going to do each and every day and learning how to become a pro. That's really what it's been. And uh, as far as making plays, I mean, Coach Spags puts you in positions to where you make plays. So that's just been me playing off a of technique. Go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. I want to ask you more about uh, Steve Spagnolo and, and this scheme. Why do you think it, it's a fit for what you do well? I mean, so coming from s and I played in a 3-4, but we kind of played it in a different way. So uh, where I'm playing at is kind of almost similar to what I did in college. It's just now I'm playing on a guard and I'm not worried about the edge. So uh, I think it let me use my size and, and strength in there to get under the bigger guys and let me just make plays that way. Let's go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Tershawn. I was curious about the sack that uh, you had on Sunday, and you can kind of take us through it. And and also specifically at the end, it, you know, it looked like you were getting ready to be able to drive Darnold to the ground pretty hard, but maybe let him up. Was that just you, you heard the whistle and you didn't want, didn't want to get the flag there? Uh, yeah, so the sack, you know, there's the first one. So it's always uh, good when you get the first one. Uh, we call something up front. And uh, yeah, I just knew if I would have slammed them, it wouldn't have been good for the pocket. So I had to let up at the end. Let's go next to Blair Kirkhoff. Go ahead, Blair. Hey, Trishon. Um, Andy Reid said a little while ago uh, regarding first-year players, rookies, that you know having a you know an experienced uh, locker room, guys that have won championships, uh, has been you know helpful to first-year guys and a willingness to help you know these older guys to help you. Can you share any of the experiences you've had with some of the veteran players helping you out? Uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'm in a room with a bunch of guys that then had success in the league and not only success, like they're uh, well-known. So just being in there with Chris, Frank, and uh, Mike Pinnell, Nadi, all those guys with experience, you know, they uh, take me under their wing and pull me to the side with something going on and just tell me how to fix it. And I always uh, just drive on that. And then knowing that they ask you to, and pulling you to the side, they, they know that you have potential. So they just uh, make sure that I'm on top of myself and they hold me to a high standard with uh, the locker room. And then there's also, you know, the back end guys, they trust me too. So, you know, just play it worked out well. Let's go next to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Tershawn, when you, obviously you're coming from a small school and that, that has challenges in itself, but when training camp arrived, when did you know, was there a specific moment when you knew that you belonged? I mean, when you, when you get picked up, you feel like you belong automatically. Uh, and just going, you know, you, you plan with champions. So competing every day, the more and more I made a few plays in training camp, I realized like, oh, I could do this. Like it raised your confidence, you know, uh, when Kalechi was here, working with him a lot, seeing him every day, uh, that really helped out a lot. You know, he aggressive. So when I was able to start winning and having a little few reps on him and able to see the film, it, it made me just arrive a little bit. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Tershawn, I have two questions for you. Um, so to start, can you explain what the feeling was for you on opening night? as a rookie without preseason games, and then what the feeling was Sunday at the halfway point of your rookie season, and then Brad, I'll have a follow-up. Uh, the first, the opening night, I mean, we played Deshaun Watson, so, I mean, it was a, it was something that was different. I had never seen this many people before. Uh, when we came out, it was standing out there and came back in the locker room, and everybody started yelling. I was like, oh, I never heard nothing like this before. And, uh, I mean, I had some jitters in me a little bit, made, and then once I – calm down in the game it, it started helping me and then uh from halftime the other night it was just like you know it's just finally everything is starting to slow down for me I mean it's still some things that you just gotta work into but uh, it just slowed down now it's starting to slow down for me and then secondly what would you say has been your most uh memorable message that you've received from somebody at Missouri S&T about the way you've played so far this season 
I mean, uh, I have a lot of supporters from S&T. So uh, just, just the way that they follow me, really, like uh, as far as people, parents, my teammates, parents, as well as uh, my teachers, they all reach out to me through either email or so uh, just really, they just telling me to keep it, keep going and uh, just never get complacent. Just just keep fighting. And, uh, you know, they just want to see me do this for a long time. Let's go last to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Tershawn, when, when you're at Missouri S&T, obviously it's not the conventional route to get to the NFL. And I'm sure you're aware of that while you're there. Um, what sort of – did was the NFL, though, still in, in your mind when you're there? And what sort of obstacles did you feel like you knew you were going to have to, to sort of hurdle to, to get here? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, like you said, it's not it's not the way that, to go. And, uh, I mean, it was always the plan. It was always the childhood dream. And uh, just being there, I knew I would have to work harder as far as not just uh, – not saying my, anything bad about my coaches, but I just knew a different level of coaching was out there. So I took a few uh, few steps of going out and finding training myself and just pushing myself through the off season. Cause at that level, you know, people don't really push themselves through the off season. So I just pushed myself through the off season, reaching out to different uh, trainers and making sure that uh, I was gonna be able to compete, not only at my level, but if I did get talent in front of me that was higher, I could compete with them as well.